Petri Wine brings you... Basil Rathbone and Nigel Bruce in the new adventures of Sherlock Holmes. The Petri family, the family that took time to bring you good wine, invite you to spend the next half hour listening to Dr. Watson tell us another exciting adventure he shared with his old friend, that master detective, Sherlock Holmes. And I'd like to tell you about something you ought to share with your family before dinner. And that's Petri California Sherry. Because Petri Sherry can make that time before dinner uh, a high spot in your day. That Petri Sherry is a truly fine wine. Its color is a deep amber, rich and inviting. And the wine is wonderfully smooth and full-bodied. Flavor? Just swell. Honestly, I mean it when I say the best beginning a good meal ever had is a glass of Petri Sherry. Oh, and look, if some of your family like their sherry dry, you know, not sweet, they'll really like Petri Pale Dry Sherry. So to be sure you please everyone, don't buy one, buy two. Buy the regular Petri Sherry... And Petri Pale Dry Sherry. And be sure you look for those letters P-E-T-R-I. Because they spell the proudest name in the history of American wines. Petri. And now I know our good friend Dr. Watson's expecting us. Let's go in and join him. Come in, come in, come in. Good evening, Doctor. Uh, good evening, Mr. Bartow. Say, how are you feeling, Doctor? All over that attack of flu you had? I'm feeling very much better, thank you, my boy. I'm still a little weak. <laughs> we old fossils take much longer to get over that sort of thing than you young fellows. Well, you take good care of yourself, Doctor. You've got a lot of friends, you know. Oh, I'm very glad to hear that. Thank you, Mr. Bartow. And now settle yourself down and I'll get on with tonight's new Sherlock Holmes adventure. Where did it take place? You may not be familiar with the names of Jersey, Guernsey, Alderney, and Sark, but those are the four principal islands that make up the group known as the Channel Islands. Oh, yes, Doctor, I have heard of them. Uh, somewhere in the English Channel, aren't they? Between the southern coast of England and the northern coast of France? That's quite right, my boy, though I very much doubt if you ever heard of the tiny island on which this story happened. It was the island of Garth, a minute but self-contained spot with a population of just under a thousand inhabitants subsisting, and from what I saw of the island in those days, subsisting very well on its dairy products. Was it under the rule of the British government, Doctor? No, Mr. Bartell, not exactly. You see, the island belonged to a family by the name of Horn. The head of the family, who was known as the Seigneur of Garth, was an independent ruler owing nominal allegiance to the King of England. That allegiance was expressed by one of those traditional ceremonies in which the Seigneur annually presented one pound of freshly churned butter... To a representative of the British Crown. Times haven't changed much, have they, Doctor? Pound of butter is still worth a king's ransom. <laughs> but uh, tell me, what were you and the great Sherlock Holmes doing on the island of Garth? Well, I just come into that, my boy. You'll give me a minute. It was in the summer of 1896 when, to my utter amazement, Holmes informed me that we were going to the island of Garth as the official representatives of the British Crown to accept the annual presentation of butter. At the time, I must confess, I couldn't see why Holmes wanted to accept such a ridiculous mission. It was only as we approached the island in a small fishing boat that he told me a great deal more was at stake than a pound of butter. Unfortunately, Mr. Bartell, I'm not much of a sailor, and as the wind was blowing hard and the sea racing, I'm afraid I wasn't a very intelligent companion. Cheer up, Watson. We'll soon be there. I hope so. I feel wretched, Holmes. I must say, the whole trip seems utterly ridiculous to me. Plunging and bobbing about in a little boat in a raging <laughs> torrent just because somebody wants to give somebody else a pound of butter. Dear old Watson, you don't really think our mission is so innocuous, do you? Then why are we going to the island of Garth? We're going to the island of Garth at the express wish of its present ruler, Martha Horn. Martha Horn? I never heard of her. She's an extremely spirited old lady. And the only woman who dared tell a certain resident of Windsor Castle that she looked devilishly dowdy for an empress. Great Scott, you mean that she... I mean, like... uh, Watson, that uh, Martha Horn's behests are not likely disregarded. Obviously, she wishes to see me urgently. Also, my brother Mycroft put pressure on me. He reminded me that a, a visit to Garth might be closely allied to this emerald tie pin I wear. Of course, you recall the origin of this pin. Well, naturally, that lady at Windsor Castle gave it to you after our little trouble last year. 
over those stolen plans for the Bruce Partington submarine. Exactly, my dear fellow. But remember that uh, the spy Oberstein had put those plans up for auction in all the naval centers of Europe. Some hint of their nature must have leaked out. It's even possible that other powers may be able by now to duplicate the pride of our submarine fleet. And whoever controls the channel, Watson, controls England. Well, they're dropping anchor, and yet we're still a quarter of a mile out from the island. Why, why do you think they're doing that? Here comes the skipper. He'll tell us. Here is as close to the island as we may approach, monsieur. We have already sent signals. A smaller boat is putting out for you. It will be here in a little while. Thank you. A smaller boat? Good Lord. Holmes, you were hinting at the naval significance of the island of Garth. Yes, old chap, I was. Well, what good would it be as a port if even a small boat like this can only come within half a mile of it? For a surface vessel, no, but we were speaking of submarines. A Garth, I learned from the encyclopedia, boasts a magnificent interior cavern accessible only through underwater channels. Great Scott, an ideal natural harbor and dry dock for a submarine fleet. Precisely, and on the control of the island of Garth, Watson may well rest the fate of the British Isles. Now, old chap... Perhaps you see why Mycroft was so anxious for us to collect a pound of butter. Holmes, doesn't it seem wonderful to, to be on land again? First the fishing smack and then that wretched little rowing boat. Then the bucket swinging us up the, the face of the cliff. <laughs> Now at last I can stretch my legs. And... Oh, my... Steady, old chap, steady, steady. Let me give you a hand. You'll soon get your land legs back again. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a bit shaky, I must confess. Hello? Who's that couple walking towards us? Our welcoming committee, no doubt. How do you do? Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. <laughs> Permit me to present myself. I am Dr. Hugo Oberwald. How do you do, sir? How do you do, doctor? And this is Mrs. Reeves, the housekeeper at Horn Castle, where you will be staying. How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Reeves? Welcome to the island of Garth, gentlemen. We were deputed to come and greet you and take you back to the castle. We can walk there across the cliff tops. It isn't very far. Ah, splendid. I think my friend will appreciate traveling on terra firma once again. <laughs> Dear me, Herr Doctor, you are not a good sailor, perhaps? No, perhaps about it, sir. I had a miserable crossing. I am sorry to hear it. I trust your short stay at the castle will be some recompense for the journey. The formal presentation of the butter will take place tonight. There will be no reason why you gentlemen cannot return to the mainland tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Reeves, but it's more than likely that we shall stay on for a few days. Oh, it will be quite unnecessary. I'm afraid that is a matter for Mrs. Horn and ourselves to decide. I'm afraid that Mrs. Horn is incapable of making any further decisions. Oh, what do you mean, madam? Uh, obviously, you have not heard, but the news is slow in reaching the mainland. Uh, Mrs. Horn died yesterday. Died? Good Lord, a uh, natural death, I suppose. But, of course... I attended her myself, a simple case of heart failure. The poor lady died in her sleep. Uh, shall we begin our walk to the castle, by Joe, Holmes, this changes things. You suppose it was a, a natural death? I suppose nothing, old fellow. But in almost 20 years of practice, I can recall precisely three clients, actual or potential, who died natural deaths. Come on, let's follow them. Mr. Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Watson... This is Mr. Christopher Horn, grandson of Mrs. Horn and the new ruler of Garth. How do you do? Hello. How do you do, sir? It's very nice of you fellows to come over here. Too bad you had to arrive just as the poor old gal kicked the bucket, though. Allow me to uh, offer my condolences on your grandmother's death, sir. Yes, yes, indeed, Mr. Horn. Thank you. It was a ghastly business. I found her, Christopher. you know. Christopher. Frightful sight. There was an awful, an awful silly grin on the old dear's face and... Don't you think it would be more to the point if you were to explain the ceremony in connection with tonight's presentation? Oh, you're right, Reeve. Reeve is a terrible tyrant, but she is efficient. Don't know what I'd do without her. Always ran everything for poor old Granny. Why, when the old girl was ill, she... Oh, Christopher, I gave you a schedule of the ceremonies this morning. What did you do with it? Dash it, Reeve, I don't know. Must have lost it. And I have my own copy in the study. <laughs> I swear I don't know what I'd do without you. Excuse us a moment, gentlemen. I'll be back in a jiffy. Holmes, what in thunder is going on here? That boy is completely under the thumb of Mrs. Reeves. He was trying to tell us something, but that frightful woman kept changing the subject. 
He spoke with an awful, silly grin on the dead woman's face. Didn't that suggest something to you? Right, sure. That's one of the characteristic symptoms of strychnine poison. Exactly, old fellow. And perhaps he was going on to mention the equally characteristic arching of the body. We've got to get Mr. Horn to ourselves for a little while, and you've got to examine the body of the dead woman. And it's going to be difficult. Hmm. Is that a balcony outside the window? Yes, it is. Come along. Let's see what it leads to. The balcony seems to lead right round this particular <clears throat> wing of the castle. Must have served as a lookout in the olden days. <sighs> I wish the balcony were a little wider. Must be a sheer drop of a couple of hundred feet down to the, the rocks below. Yeah. Hello. These must be the windows of the room adjoining the one we just came out of. Let's go a little closer, shall we? We may be able to find out something. Can you see anything? Yes. They're in there. Mrs. Reeves and the boy. She's leaving the room. Now's our opportunity. I'll tap on the window. He's seen us. He's coming to open it. What are you two doing out there? Admiring the view? Yes, my boy. It's, it's quite beautiful. Uh, Mr. Horn. Yes, Mr. Holmes. I was a great admirer of your grandmother. And I was interested in what you were telling me of her death. She had a... A grin on her face, you said. Yes, it was... It was awful. Her her body was all hunched up like... Like a croquet hoop. Really? Of course, uh, Dr. Oberwald said it was perfectly all right, but I must say it seemed dashed odd to me. Yes, it was far from all right, I, I assure you. And you started to say something else. What was it? Let me see. You said, uh, when she was ill... Oh, yes, that was a silly business. When she was ill, she thought she was in danger from poisoning, so she, she made Mrs. Reeves taste all her food and drink. Did she really? Uh, uh, where is your grandmother's body now? In the West Wing. The funeral's to be tomorrow morning. I see. Uh, where did Mrs. Reeves go? I'm well, here on the balcony behind you, gentlemen, listening to your conversation with the greatest interest. Christopher, let me warn you. These men are the emissaries of the British government. They would stop at nothing to take the island over. These men are trying to influence you against me, against Terevi, who has looked after you ever since you were born, and who tries to protect you now that your grandmother has gone and you are alone. Yes, I know, Reevy, but after all... That is your pride as the head of the Horn family, the Seigneur of Garth, the Garth that I am trying to save for you. This man is completely unscrupulous. He was about to accuse me of murder, weren't you, Mr. Sherlock Holmes? The thought had occurred to me, Mrs. Reeves. Of course it had, because you wished to poison Christopher's mind against me. Well, Mr. Holmes, we have no police on the island of Garth. Our only law is the word of the seigneur, and Christopher now holds that title. Seigneur, what do you say? Will you allow an Englishman to blind you by accusing me of being a murderess? Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, I shall meet you at the ceremony tonight. Beyond that, I, I don't care to speak to you again. Good day. A shame to spoil your plans, isn't it, Mr. Holmes? <laughs> well, upon the soul. Magnificent, Watson. Magnificent. A murderess who seeks to defeat me by accusing herself. Superb. It's a new game, my dear fellow. And one that must be played to a finish. We'll hear the rest of Dr. Watson's story in just a second, so I'm just going to remind you that right now is one time you'd really enjoy a glass of Petri California Port. You couldn't ask for a more delicious wine. Petri Port, with its deep, rich red color and its heart-of-the-grape flavor, is one of America's all-time favorite wines. Petri Port is wonderful after dinner and perfect to serve when company comes. Try it. But just remember that when you want the kind of port I'm talking about, you've got to make sure it's Petri Port. Because all Petri wines are good wines. Dr. Watson, this is certainly an unusual story you're telling us tonight. Uh, what happened after Mrs. Reeves left you and Sherlock Holmes standing on the balcony? We retired to our rooms and had a quiet and lonely lunch. Though the great man said little, I could see that he was deeply excited and that his keen brain was evolving some plan that would enable us to solve the mystery of Mrs. Horne's death. After lunch, we started to descend the stairs leading to the main hall of Garth Castle. As we did so, Holmes said... Uh, 
Watson. We're in no danger ourselves. Mrs. Reeves knows that we are here as emissaries of the British government. Yes, and if we didn't return with the butter within a few days, there'd be a British dreadnought here looking for us. However, uh, I am in danger uh, of one of my worst defeats. My professional pride is piqued. If only I could... Ah. Uh, Watson. Yes, Holmes? If at any time today I slip you a note, don't read it at once, but... Shh, 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 shh. Here comes Mrs. Reeves. Uh, precisely, Watson. I entirely agree. If I do not make the test on Mrs. Horn's body within 24 hours of her death, it will be useless. I must make it by 3 o'clock this afternoon. Mr. Holmes. Oh, oh yes, Mrs. Reeves. I want to apologize for my behavior before lunch. I was intolerably rude. Oh, please, no. Whatever my quarrels may be with British politics, I at least owe to both of you the duties of hospitality. Oh, that's very gracious of you, Mrs. Reeves. Uh, I wonder... Uh, would your hospitality also include a, a personally conducted tour of the subterranean caverns for which this island has become internationally famous? Wouldn't they really interest well, you? Well, I'm afraid that my friend and I won't have the time Oh, yes, to not at all, Watson, not at all. We have plenty of time. Well, as long as we're back here by three o'clock. I'm sure Dr. Oberwald would be delighted to join us. He has made quite a study of the unique rock formation. Oh, that's splendid. Um, it should prove a most interesting excursion. But, Holmes, why do we want to go stomping around a lot of damp and smelly caves? Well, the exercise will do us good, old fellow. Uh, uh, will you lead the way, Mrs. Reeves? And please remember that it's most important that I return I here... I remember, Mr. Holmes. You must be back here by three o'clock. <laughs> Mr. Holmes, and we shall reach the giant cavern. Ah, most interesting. Uh, Watson and Dr. Oberwald seem to have lagged behind us somewhat. They will be here in a moment. There. This is the giant cavern. Ah, magnificent. Truly a miracle of nature. It's a natural submarine dry dock hewn out of the rocks. Yes, Mr. Holmes. And in the olden days, only the smugglers who inhabited this island knew the entrance that leads to this cave. The first seigneur of Garth found a cache of untold wealth hidden here. Really? Silks, jewels. There are still the remains of some of the finest Calvados brandy stored among oh, these rocks. Indeed. <laughs> An incomparable drink. Would you care for some? It is our custom whenever visitors honor us with their presence to offer them a glass. <laughs> oh, I should be delighted. There is a natural shelf here in the rocks. Perfect hiding place. There you are, Mr. Holmes. And here is a glass. Oh, this is a rare privilege. I imagine that very few people have been offered it. Only our most distinguished visitors, I assure you. <laughs> this uh, cavern is completely inaccessible from the outer sea, I presume? Completely. Unless, of course, ships could swim under the sea. Which, as you know as well as I, they can, Mrs. Reeves. Even outside the imaginings of Jules Verne. Indeed. Uh, would you care to explore a little deeper? The others will be with us soon. Dr. Overvold, the others seem to be some way ahead of us. Yes, they do, don't they, Doctor? Uh, Holmes! Holmes! Where are you? <laughs> Dear me, I'm afraid we cannot follow them. Uh, what do you mean? The next cavern is already cut off by the rising tide. Great Scott, you mean that they're cut off? I am afraid so. But do not worry here, Doctor. In a few hours, the tide will recede. They are in no danger. Just, uh, shall I say, uh, temporarily marooned. <laughs> Uh, I'm getting confoundedly sleepy. I'm so sorry. I'm afraid that we stayed here longer than I intended. I fear that we are cut off by the tides. Cut off? By the tides? We're in no danger. In a few hours, we shall be able to return. But uh, I'm afraid I cannot get you back at three o'clock, which was the time I promised. Uh, but it's vital. Uh, abs absolutely vital that I can get back. I'm so sleepy. <laughs> but please keep talking. I must keep awake. Uh, 
Dr. Kruger, I, I must get to Sherlock Holmes at once. I am sorry, Herr Doctor, but we are not able to control the forces of nature. We cannot force the water to recede. Your friend is in no danger. No, no, but he's got a most important test that he must make by three o'clock. I am afraid that will be impossible. I've got to do something. I should have come to these blasted caves the first place. What on earth I ought to do? By Jove, that note that Holmes gave me, he told me to open it if... Uh, where did I put it? Ah, here it is. A note from Mr. Sherlock Holmes, eh? Vital that you make medical test. Great Scott, Dr. Overall, it's absolutely necessary for me to return to the castle at once. Indeed. A note from Mr. Sherlock Holmes, and now it is most important that you return to the castle. No, my fine English friend. I am afraid I cannot allow you to. Oh, I don't know how you propose to stop me, sir. You see this revolver? And do you see this stick? I warn you, Herr Doctor. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> I'm sorry you can't hear me, Dr. Overville, but when Sherlock Holmes gives me orders, I carry them out. Ah. Uh, Mrs. Reeves, are we still trapped by the tide? Well, what, what time is it? Five o'clock. I'm afraid that you'll be a trifle late for your important appointment. What a pity. You deliberately trapped me here. You drugged the brandy and kept me a prisoner. Did I? Now, why should I do that, Mr. Holmes? Because you're greedy for power. That's obvious in your domination of that pleasant, though weak young man who is now Senor of Gath. I'm sure your beliefs would find support in certain ideologies now arising in Germany. Your choice of a German doctor as an accomplice in your plans would support that theory. And what might my plans be? I should say that you're determined to give Gath as a submarine base to Germany. With this island in their power, they could control the channel. Very interesting. And I suppose, as well as being a spy, I'm responsible for Mrs. Horn's murder. You and Dr. Oberval between you? She was too strong for you. You had to get her out of the way. You probably made subtle attempts on her life at first, the origin of which she did not realize, but uh, which caused her eventually to send for me. My arrival forced your hand, and so you and Dr. Oberval resorted to the quite unsubtle expedient of... Of poisoning her. All pure supposition, Mr. Holmes. The only law on this island is Christopher Horn. Do you suppose he'll believe you? No, I suppose he won't. You've outwitted me, Mrs. Reeves. I walked into your trap just as you intended me to. Then in that case, you may collect your pound of butter tonight and return to the mainland tomorrow. Mrs. Reeves, uh, how much longer do we have to wait for the tide before we can make our way back to the castle? <laughs> we can live now. We could have left at any time. There's another secret entrance that is above the tide level. I merely had to make you overstay the hour of your test. I could not risk Christopher's seeing definite proof. Come now. I shall lead you back. You fool. <laughs> Where have you been all this time? Don't mind that, Watson. Did you open the note? Yes. You followed my instructions? Yes, it was, as you suspected. Thank heaven, old chap. Then now we can hoist her with her own petard. Shh. Here she comes. I am glad to see, gentlemen, that you have assembled here in the seigneur's room. The ceremony of presenting the butter traditionally takes place here. As soon as Christopher arrives, we will explain our customs in this matter. Uh, Dr. Watson, I trust that Herr Oberwald proved an interesting companion on your excursion this afternoon. Yes, it's indeed most interesting. We had a discussion of the relative merits of the walking stick versus the revolver. I think I was able to make my argument fairly convincing. Where is Dr. Oberwald now? I imagine he's lying down. He had all the symptoms of impending headache when I, I saw him last. Why are you smiling, Mr. Holmes? What's been going on? I'm afraid, Mrs. Reeves, that your plans have misfired rather badly. As soon as Mr. Horn arrives, I expect you will be under arrest for murder and high treason. Christopher would never believe you. Wouldn't I? Mrs. Reeves, you poisoned my grandmother. Christopher, what lies have these men been telling you? You're the one that's been telling me lies. I believed you when you said you'd been tasting the old lady's food. But when Dr. Watson showed me the results of his test this afternoon... It was as clear as daylight. But the tests could prove nothing after 24 hours had passed. 
You said so yourself, Mr. Holmes. A deliberate lie, Mrs. Reeves. I'm afraid that I invented that mythical 24-hour test. I knew that as soon as I mentioned it, you would attempt to prevent my carrying it out. So I was delighted when you fell into my trap. You thought that you were shanghaiing me, whereas in reality I was shanghaiing you. My job is to prove your guilt to the senor. With your dominant presence away from the household, it was easy for Dr. Watson to make his test. You devil. You knew all the time. Of course I did. But I had to deceive you. I'm glad my performance was sufficiently convincing. By the way, Mrs. Reeves, the drug brandy was dreadfully clumsy. You didn't drink it, huh? Of course I didn't. But it was very unflattering to me that uh, Mrs. Reeves thought I might. Mrs. Reeves, you realize what this means, don't you? I'm going to ask these gentlemen to take you and Dr. Oberfeld back to the mainland with them tomorrow. And stand trial in a British court? Never! I was born on the island of Garth. I have lived here all my life and I shall die here. Reedy, what are you up to? Stop her! She's going out on the balcony. One day Garth will belong to Germany. One day the whole world will belong to Germany. Goodbye, you meddling fool. Goodbye! Great Scott, she's gone. It must be a couple of hundred feet to the rocks below. What a dreadful thing. I still can't believe she was a murderess and... And a traitor. No, oh, it's shocking. Oh, shabby finish to a shabby business. Mr. Horn, I suggest that we make sure Dr. Oberval does not escape justice. And that we then perform the ritual presentation of the butter. Yes, Mr. Holmes. The island of Garth will still pay tribute to England. And I think it always will. Well, Doctor, that was some story. So Germany didn't get the island of Garth after all. No, Mr. Bartell. In fact, in after years, the island proved to be an invaluable submarine base for England. Say, um, what about the pound of butter? Did Holmes get it? Oh, yes, yes. But why are you so interested in the the butter? Are you kidding? In our house, butter is our second most favorite topic of conversation. Your second most favorite? Well, what's your favorite topic of conversation? Remember, you ask me. Petri wine. Oh, as if I didn't know. Doctor, that Petri wine is something to really talk about. You know, the Petri family has been making wine for generations. Why, the art of making fine wine is their heritage. Handed down from father to son, from father to son. Believe me, when it comes to turning luscious, sun-ripened California grapes into fragrant, delicious wine, the Petri family really knows how. And they're proud of their wine, too. That's why the name Petri on a bottle of wine really means something. It's the personal assurance of the Petri family that Every drop of that wine is good wine. It ought to be, because Petri took time to bring you good wine. Well, Dr. Watson, what new Sherlock Holmes adventure do you have lined up for us next week? Next week, Mr. Bartell, I'm going to tell you a story that took place on the Sussex Downs many, many years ago. It concerns a young girl, a painter in watercolors, and a very wise old lady. I call it The Adventure of the Living Doll. Tonight's Sherlock Holmes adventure was written by Dennis Green and Anthony Boucher and was suggested by an incident in the Sir Arthur Conan Doyle story, The Adventure of the Bruce Partington Plan. Music is by Dean Fossler. Mr. Rathbone appears through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and Mr. Bruce through the courtesy of Universal Pictures, where they are now starring in the Sherlock Holmes series. The Petri Wine Company of San Francisco, California, invite you to tune in again next week, same time, same station. Sherlock Holmes comes to you from our Hollywood studios. This is Harry Bartell saying goodnight for the Petri family. For a solid hour of exciting mystery dramas, listen every Monday on most of these same stations at 8 o'clock to Michael Shane, followed immediately by Sherlock Holmes. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>